to them Somalia with communism. And I lived with communism and saw that this is the biggest disruption in our uh, society. They nationalized the business. They have over, you know, the intellectuals became the lower level of the community. The uh, scholars of the faith and every party is, they just change it ups, upside down. <coughs> the system of, of, the, of the society. And they try to recruit, recruit the youngsters into the military. This has gone to some extent for a time until there was a war, a war, a war broke out between Somalia and Ethiopia on the basis that the Russians built this strong military in Somalia and after some time the whole influence in the Horn of Africa came under the influence of Russia. Ethiopia, in Ethiopia there was a military, military dictatorship and that military dictatorship also invited the Russians into the area. So now the Russians and the Russians were in Ethiopia and Somalia together. And the Somalis said, well, you have been uh, advising us to bring, uh, to solve, that you are going to solve this problem by force, by building strong army in Somalia. Now you can solve it in, in peace, while you have the influence of both parties. And that was not realized. It didn't came true. The Russians have their own agenda and their interests, and they said no. <coughs> so, the option of war started. The Somalis started war, and they defeated the Ethiopians and freed all the area uh, that Somalis in Ethiopia occupied. Because they are getting the help of the whole community over there. Now, the Russians came with their <coughs> uh, armament, and they brought uh, 5,000, I don't know, 5,000 Cubans, soldiers. And from uh, East Europe, they brought uh, military uh, men and also equipment, heavy army. We were defeated. Somalis were defeated. So at that point, the military rule in Somalia that brought the Russians and went through all these things became unpopular in Somalia because the policies they followed and uh, you know really. The country, the country became a failure. It didn't bring any success. And it destroyed the fiber of the community. The family life, the faith, the business, everything. So uh, people were dissatisfied and they were, they were, they were ready to, uh, for a change. But the change was very costly. The military rule was strong to manipulate on the population uh, through clans <coughs> and say and they are one clan against the other or tribe or whatever we call against the other so that they will stay in the power. And this led into the civil war I just started. And this is why you know the <coughs> community, Somali community here in Minnesota. I was one of the first people to come to Minnesota in 1993. Although I traveled uh, in other parts in the world, uh, when I came to Minnesota, there was no, I have not been to a place colder <laughs> than before. And my family, my kids and my wife, you know, some of them went traveling with me and saw uh, snow in Europe before. But most of them didn't know him. When we came, I had to answer so many questions from my kids and my wife, my, you know, my kids, that I didn't have answers for. It was so cold in February that uh, it was below 60 with wind. But it was warm for us. Warm. And I remember when I was uh, going to my
my first apartment that I, I, I received a call from a group from a church and they asked me if I need help. I said most, I need the most help. <laughs> I didn't have anything, I didn't have money. I have only my family. But when I, when I, I said yes, uh, there was a woman who came uh, to the office of the apartment I was renting. And we met there. And the words she uh, was telling me to help it still is sounding my my ears. It was so touching that, you know, she said, we came here to help you as a human. You know, we respect your faith because she knew that I was Muslim. And that's why we came here to help you. So she brought uh, in the apartment the kitchen, complete new. And the sleeping, complete new. You know how they figured out the priorities. That was amazing. Amazing. And we thank them all the time. So what brought, what, you know, the area I came from, Somalia, is so beautiful, so wonderful, you know. All the time, the weather is, the sky is blue, the sun is there, you know, the, uh, it's not hot. It's 70, 75, most of the time, in the air. You can grow anything that you want. Although we, didn't, we don't have a lot of rain, but... The small amount we have can, you know, bring everything. And the, the night I sleep, two hours if I sleep, I'm fresh. And that was the climate over there. And you compare here, climate here. <laughs> but I felt warmer here. And I say that what makes the difference? The human. The human factor. If the human factor is, uh, is not on the right track, not uh, as a human values, then everything will be bad. Everything will look bad and harmful. So here in Minnesota, I tell people that <clears throat> you have good things. Keep it. You are welcoming those who have destroyed you. So this is, uh, as teachers, you are going to uh, teach kids who have not seen their country, who don't know any culture of their, you know, the original culture we have in Somalia before this, you know, before this uh, communism and dictatorship and all these things. I remember as a young man when I was growing up and in school, we did not have material wealth. We didn't have cars, we didn't have anything, but we did have satisfaction of what we had. We used to love each other. We used to be very generous to anybody who comes to us. You know, the camel herders in, 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 uh, in Somalia, if they have one, they will slaughter for you as a, as a guest. They used to do that. And it was a beautiful country because people were nice. So, the kids don't know these values. They came to refugee camps. The, the parents were very busy with the, not with the, how to deal with the kids, but how to survive. I remember as a parent, when I came out of Somalia, I was in Egypt, in Cairo, and my kids, I didn't care about their education. I didn't care about anything. Where on earth can we have peace and stay? and be comfortable. That's what was, you know, in my mind. The rest were, you know, lectures. So the kids here are coming from mostly from refugee camps. It's now 20, how many years? 20, over, around 20 years.